New Mexico History in the Land of Enchantment. When the United States acquired the New Mexico Territory in 1848 as part of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo that ended the Mexican-American War, Americans were immediately attracted to the area for its potential to become a new state. The territory was sparsely populated and mostly undeveloped, but it had several key attributes that made it appealing to American settlers. First, it was located on the Santa Fe Trail, a major trade route between the United States and Mexico. Second, it had a large Hispanic population, which was seen as a potential source of labor for American businesses. Finally, the territory had a variety of natural resources, including timber, minerals, and water. American settlers began moving into the New Mexico Territory in the 1850s, and the population grew rapidly. In 1860, the population was estimated to be around 50,000. By the time the American Civil War broke out in 1861, the population had grown to over 100,000. Why is New Mexico relevant to the United States? New Mexico is of importance to the United States for many reasons. First, it is a key part of the American Southwest, and its culture and history are deeply intertwined with that of the region. Second, it is home to some prominent military installations, including White Sands Missile Range, Kirtland Air Force Base, and Fort Bliss. Third, it contains a significant portion of the country's nuclear arsenal, making it a vital part of the U.S. national security posture. Finally, the state's economy has become diversified and prosperous, making it an invaluable contributor to the United States' gross domestic product. Please like, share, and subscribe. The state is home to many natural wonders, including mountains, forests, and deserts. White Sands National Monument which is home to the world's largest field of mineral gypsum dunes, is located in New Mexico. The black-footed ferret, which is North America's rarest mammal, can be found throughout New Mexico, as can black bears, bighorn sheep, cougars, and coyotes. Early European-American settlers discovered the gypsum dunes at White Sands National Monument to be extremely picturesque and they worked diligently to protect them. The dunes are still a popular tourist destination today, and they also serve as an economic engine for the community. Caverns near Carlsbad are also popular tourist destinations, and they contribute to the local economy as well. Caverns were formed during groundwater flow underground and calcium carbonate deposition underground. What did the United States gain from New Mexico? The United States gained a lot from the acquisition, it gained a new territory that was rich in resources, and it served as a buffer against the expansion of other powers in North America. New Mexico was founded on January 6, 1912, as the 47th State of the Union. The territory of New Mexico changed several times during that long period, as Spain, France, Britain, Mexico, Texas, and the Confederate States of America vied for control. As the threat from France grew, Governor Antonio Valverde y Cosio sent about 100 soldiers and Pueblo Indians to combat the threat in 1720. In the present-day state of Nebraska, the expedition encountered a large Pony village on the Platte River. All but ten of New Mexico's soldiers, including their leader, died in the attack. As a result of a treaty between the Spanish Empire and New Mexico, the state was always barred from trading with its neighbors to the east. Following independence, the newly established federal government began to ease trade restrictions by allowing wagons to transport goods and supplies from long-isolated New Mexico. As soon as Anglo-American merchants arrived in New Mexico, they quickly established themselves as prominent figures in local society and politics. The great space of unknown was described as an area that has never been fully explored between Texas and Oklahoma, including much of present-day Texas. The Republic of Texas was founded by Texans after they gained independence in 1836. After the U.S. annexed Texas in 1845, relations between the Mexicans and the U.S. plunged into a tailspin. The conflict arose from the desire of many American politicians to take all of the southern state's territory to the Pacific Ocean. Many people hoped to spread their blessings to new lands. On August 18, 1846, the Army of the West arrived in Santa Fe, and the United States flag was raised over the Palace of Governors. Armijo dispatched troops to Glorieta Pass, just 15 miles southeast of the capital, and declared he would not fight the Americans. Some historians believe his actions were cowardice or an attempt to portray New Mexico as weak and incapable of winning wars. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo is thought to have ceded New Mexico, Arizona, California, Nevada, Utah, and parts of Colorado to Mexico. 
Overall, the Mexicans lost 55% of their former territory, including Texas. Slavery became a major issue in the admission of new states and territories to the Union of the West. The Gadsden Purchase established New Mexico's southern border. The Mormon Battalion built a piece of road known as the Crooked Wagon Road south of the Gila River, but it is still in Mexican territory. To compensate for the purchase of the Mesilla Valley, Congress agreed to a much smaller tract of land in southern New Mexico. When southern New Mexico residents petitioned Congress in 1856 to separate the lower part of the state between Texas and California, it was decided that it would happen. Having seceded from the Union in 1861, Texas petitioned to be admitted to the Confederacy as the territory of Arizona. During the Civil War, Confederate forces captured Mesilla and Fort Craig near Socorro, as well as Fort Craig near Georgetown. During New Mexico's 62 years as a territorial state, there were approximately 50 bills introduced in Congress for statehood. Pro-statehood politicians convinced the majority of Congress in 1875 to pass enabling legislation for the state. Aside from political differences, New Mexico's problems are also caused by cultural differences. The Protestant majority United States was the victim of several waves of anti-immigrant and anti-Catholic activism throughout the 19th century. New Mexico was widely perceived as a state with no self-government by many Americans because of its reputation as a state with no such thing. New Mexicans were looking for ways to demonstrate their fitness to be citizens to get an official ID. During the Spanish-American War of 1898, President McKinley enlisted the services of Spanish-American War Governor Miguel Otero. New Mexicans were so enthusiastic that the state was the largest delegation of Theodore Roosevelt's Rough Riders. By signing the Enabling Act in 1910, President Taft paved the way for New Mexico's independence. Despite a strong desire for its former western half, New Mexicans overwhelmingly supported statehood, not because of nostalgia but because statehood was the only way to bring prosperity. The daunting journey Kearney and his army of about 1,000 men had just been completed. They had arrived at a promising land after crossing rugged and inhospitable terrain in the Rocky Mountains and the Great Basin. As Kearney and his fellow pioneers set out to build an open market, they hoped to create a place where trade and investment would thrive. It is expected that New Mexico will become a gateway to the Western world soon. Please like, share, and subscribe. How did New Mexico gain statehood? The U.S. Congress passed an act in June 1910 that authorized the people of New Mexico and Arizona territories to form constitutions and state governments. These states will be admitted to the Union once Congress approves their application. What attracts lungers to New Mexico? Tuberculosis bacteria cannot spread as quickly in a dry high-altitude environment. Tuberculosis can be managed, but it cannot be cured. Tuberculosis patients, also known as lungers, crowded into the area to live and thrive in a warm, dry climate. It is estimated that many of the patients who survived the illness remained in New Mexico. How did the New Mexico Territory become part of the United States? In 1846, the United States went to war with Mexico. After two years of fighting, the United States emerged victorious, and as part of the peace treaty, Mexico ceded the territory of present-day New Mexico to the United States. The people of New Mexico worked hard for statehood. Although other states were opposed, the people of New Mexico were able to gain independence. On January 6, 1912, the land of enchantment became the 47th state in the United States. The people of New Mexico dedicated themselves to making this impossible dream a reality. Their determination to create a better future for themselves and their families contributed greatly to this achievement. New Mexico is a state of diversity. According to recent data, New Mexico is the sixth most populous state in the United States, with a population of well over a million people. Albuquerque, New Mexico's largest city, is home to around 500,000 people. New Mexico is rich in coal, oil, and natural gas. Furthermore, it's one of the top producers of hay, cattle, and pork. The state is also a major exporter of manufactured goods such as aircraft and automobiles. The state of New Mexico is one of the most diverse in the country due to its diverse population which includes various nationalities and religions. It's rich in natural resources and manufactured goods, thanks in part to its rich history. New Mexico's history can be traced back thousands of years. It was Spanish colonialists who first explored and mapped the area in the 16th century. New Mexico is a state rich in history and culture, with a diverse range of landscapes, from mountains in the north to deserts in the south. It's home to many Native American tribes, 
which have their own cultures and traditions. Despite its small size, New Mexico is well known for its rich history, diverse culture, and natural beauty. Anyone looking for a place to call home will find it to be a unique and exciting place to live. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by clicking the like button and subscribing to our channel. Also, if you click the bell icon and turn on notifications you will be the first to know when we upload new videos. Thanks for watching, we appreciate it.